This is the Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is the Chris Abraham Show. My name's Chris Abraham. Uh, it is uh, December 2, and it is foggy, and it is gray, but it is in the 50s Fahrenheit, so it is extremely warm, and there is zero wind, and I am a sexy South Arlington, and I have not a nothing but a bit of fluff in my head because... This pickled noggin doesn't know what to talk about. I mean, uh, one topic that I can talk about is how open-minded free thinkers on Mastodon or, uh, what is it, Noster, who talk about independent media and talk about freedom of expression and so forth still can have such a stick up their ass with regards to when I share things from uh, Al Jazeera, uh, Sputnik RT, uh, or Epoch News. And it amuses the heck out of me because if, for example, I said, uh, I said, I don't know why anybody who wants to know all the pattern points in the world to be able to discern and maybe analyze what's actually going on wouldn't want all the, the OS, OS int, OS int, OSINT, open source intelligent humanly possible and his response was rt's not open source intelligence and i you know went over to chat gp and of course of course rt and sputnik and pravda and china news and epoch news and south china sea news and and dw and and uh cnn i mean they're all open source intelligence sources right i mean uh, why wouldn't someone who considers Russia to be their adversary, why wouldn't one aggressively, like, pan for gold on the front page of RT and Sputnik? It's because this is just a facade. Like, the truth is, is they don't want to be bad boys, right? They don't want to be bad. They might talk a good game, but then they'll quickly take their Noster uh address on mastodon and they'll chastise you for sharing they'll they'll scold you for sharing uh op for opposing forces uh propaganda my answer always is i want to see all the propaganda i want to see the propaganda from new york times and wall street journal and epoch and rt and wall and, and uh and the washington post and msnbc and fox news and Pravda and Sputnik and Al Jazeera and uh, et cetera. Mother Jones, Atlantic, New Yorker, New York Magazine, uh, Huff Post, France 24, Deutsche Welle. Like, I, I eyeball them all. And the reason why I share Op4 propaganda is because nobody else does, right? Everybody shares the edgy stuff that, in fact, reinforces uh, normie establishment narrative. And I want to go ahead and offer a counterpoint. And in every bit of propaganda, there lies a bit of truth. So if you, if you uh, are willing to dig through a thousand tons of shale, you might come away, I don't know, shale, bad example. But let's say, you know, you, you, you dig through a thousand tons of coal and then there you have a diamond, right? So... It's extremely, like, I learn more based on the kind of propaganda that Russia chooses to make and the kind of American media that they choose to share, because they share a lot of Wall Street Journal and New York Times. Like, they selectively uh, repeat things that, uh, that they think is valuable to their narrative, right? Like, they'll always accentuate and amplify stuff that wasn't on page one, wasn't at the, uh, above the fold on the first page of the Times, they'll amplify the counterpoint after, you know, the Hunter Biden laptop was proven to be true, or when Russiagate was debunked as being 
uh, a hoax and that uh, whatever. You know what I mean? So in all these cases, in all these cases, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, you need to know, like, you can't have your head in the sand. And no matter how intently you are keeping up to date on, you know, freaking blogs and, and quote, independent media sources and even, you know, Substack, there's still an incredible blind spot happening that, that you, you might not be aware of unless you are really open to a broad swath of, of, uh, of opposition forces OSINT, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're doing good, how are you? We still don't have, I mean, honestly, we still don't have access to languages that we don't speak, right? Like, um, I can't speak Arabic, and I can speak French, and I can speak Spanish, and I can speak German, but I can't figure out Dutch, and I don't know Persian, and I don't know Arabic, and I don't know uh, Pakistani, I don't know Turkish, I don't know any Chinese, I don't know Japanese, I don't know Thai, right? So why limit, why limit the uh, exposure that we have to content, especially since 90% of all media is probably in languages we don't uh, understand the written word uh, or the or any of it. Um, 90, you know, 90% of all social media is in a different language that Americans generally can't understand. And who trusts the translators, right? I mean, do you trust the translators? Do you trust that they're going to give the, you know, legit uh, verified translation? Or do you think they might spin it too? Uh, we have a perfect example of that. Like supposedly an IDF guy was showing a schedule on the wall and the schedule on the wall wasn't about prisoners or about killing or about torture or about torturing and killing babies. It was just like, I don't know, the janitorial schedule. And all anyone had to do was use a little bit of Google Translate and Google Lens and figure out that, uh, that you know, you can bullshit check Arabic, you can bullshit check Palestinian, you can bullshit check Hebrew, you know what I mean? Like, but... Doing a due diligence requires that you have an open mind and that you don't just fancy yourself a free thinker, that you allow yourself to be barraged by uh, shockingly contradictory things without always assuming that they're Russian propaganda or that it's Putin or that it's Christo fascist or whatever. Like, you need to be willing to include all the ingredients of the world and then figure out at the end of the day what patterns you can come up with where the venn diagram overlaps are uh what the uh what the west is and isn't saying what the east is and isn't saying what russia is and isn't saying what israel is and isn't saying what ukraine is and isn't saying what biden is and isn't saying what Kamala is and isn't saying, what Zelensky is and isn't saying, what Putin is and isn't saying, etc. So anyone, it's almost like fishing. Anyone on Twitter or Mastodon who calls me out for sharing something from Sputnik or, or Al Jazeera or RT or South China News or Epoch News or whatever immediately gets blocked by me. Because, like, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm just not, I mean, I'm obviously not a normie, whatever the fuck that is. But I certainly really think it's important to establish the fact that everybody has a voice. And then we get to decide through analysis and discernment and cross-referencing and, and experience over time, you know, uh, historical data collection and from... Uh, and from the uh, genius of the of large numbers of people, be it on Twitter or on Mastodon or on Facebook or whatever, or through personal relationships, it's important to do a little bit of checksum, you know, make sure there's no corruption in the code. And when there is corruption, that you run it through a type of, I don't know, uh, antivirus script so you can degauss that information, yo.
And what do you think they do with Langley? Langley's not like, I can't read the RT. I can't read. I felt this way in high school. Like, I was really afraid of the devil, right? I was really, I don't know why I was so afraid of the devil. I don't even know if I believed in God. But I felt like there was this corrupting, demonic, like, thing going on in the world. And so I wouldn't even touch or look at or be in the same room with or even like engage with people who are like being totally like black sabbath cool with their satanic uh bible right so it was pretty popular when i was you know in the 80s right like um i was reading uh anarchist cookbook and they were reading the satanic bible and i felt like even if i touched it it would corrupt me forever and i would end up on the naughty list of the world and i feel like that's what people have been like tacitly led to believe with regards to RT or Sputnik or Al Jazeera or any other organ that isn't, I don't know, has a stamp of approval by the Democratic Party, the Democrat Party. I don't know. I feel like while people are willing to go ahead and, and rub their brains, their, their bare pink naked brains on the shit-stained floors of social media, Twitter and Facebook and TikTok and Insta and YouTube and OnlyFans, Patreon. I feel like there's this, I don't know, this, this uh, line in the sand. I feel like also maybe reading the FT or Sputnik or whatever is kind of like taking a step too far in terms of people tacitly believing that there's a list that they might be on or might get on. So I think that's why people avoid it too. They think that someone is paying attention to what they look at. And if they look at the wrong thing, they might be drummed out of the Democrat party or they might be drummed out of civilized society or they might end up like a, like a January 6th person, um, you know, in jail for 20 years just based on associations. So... Anyway, I'm here at the farmer's market, so I'm going to start, stop talking like a crazy person. And, uh, I will, uh, talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.